Hello and welcome to Unleash Your Inner Badass, episode number 35. And today we're going to talk about something that we get to uh, deal with. We have to deal with it on, in our own journeys. And now we're guiding a lot of our students who happen to express the problem that when they step into this new journey of learning influence marketing, uh, automation, running advertising, building funnels, there's a lot of reject, not rejection, resistance coming from their uplines. First of all, it's a new strategy. They cannot help them, right, in using this strategy. So it's kind of like a feeling of being alone. Some uplines actually reject their downlines who go uh, choose this path because I guess there is some sort of scarcity mentality there. Whereas if it's new, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you uh, just do what you worked in the past? Why you reinventing the wheel? That's actually was my personal journey. And I had to fire my upline, not in a bad way, right? Every time, like we say, well, fire your upline, it's kind of like, oh, I have to go and make the scene and tell them that they're not, whatever, I'm breaking up with you, right? I'm leaving. No, <laughs> that's not what it means, right? You still can be uh, working with people that you loved from the beginning, but you have just to own your own business, step into the ownership and express to them in a loving, caring way that from now on, you are, you know, your own upline because you want to build this business this way and not the other way. And if they want to, you know, hop along in your journey or contribute in certain way, positive way to your journey, they're welcome to come along. But if they all they're going to be doing is trying to stop you or trying to feel you guilty or sabotage what you're doing, it's not serving you. And now I look back, I had to make that decision and break up with my upline in a loving and caring way. And if I haven't done that, I wouldn't be where I am right now. I probably would quit network marketing altogether because what I was doing was not serving me anymore. So I had to choose me, right? I had to choose my business and how I wanted to build it. And yes, there were some resistance and roadblocks in the way. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. How to navigate through this challenge. No, I mean, I mean, it's a real thing, right? Like this, and it's actually more common than people think. So if you're sitting here watching this, catching this, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's me, but I don't want to say anything. I don't want to do anything because, you know, you just don't know if it's happening. It's, hap it's happening across the board, right? Um, and in my own personal experience, I kind of like, had an attitude at the time when I first learned influence marketing, I got to that point where I had gone higher and higher and higher all the way to the top in my organization. And, and the top of that, uh, that leader and I had a good relationship. Uh, I mean, good. And, and I mean, like we were good friends outside of, right? Like we enjoyed being around one another. We golfed, you know, all those things together. We're great with my husband and all the things. But when I had committed to like, okay, I'm all in. And I was like, I want to meet and like, let's come up with a game plan because I'm all in. Like I drew my line in the sand. I had no fears. I, I was just ready to like run. And he was like, all right. You know, we were, we happened to be at an event and he was like, you know, you know, you and Scott, which is my husband, come, you know, meet me up, uh, me and my wife up in our room and we'll come up with this game plan. And the game plan was to make a list, you guys. Um, and I'm like, this is your hidden secret strategy. Like, I thought that you were going to like, let me in on the know of like how to really build. Right. So when I hit that or when that happened, I just had this like realization that I I didn't know how I was going to get to the next level because that wasn't going to get me the next level because it hadn't done. I was so tired of that and it hadn't done giving me the results I wanted. So I seeked outside strategies outside of my company. Right. And when I learned this influence market, I was so fired up. I was so excited. I was like, I feel like I'm in this like underground world. Like 
Like, is this the underground, like the cool kid club that no one knows about? Like, why are not more people teaching about this, right? It was so refreshing. I was so fired up and pumped up about it. And as I started implementing and showing up differently on social media, I started getting the attention of other leaders. And it wasn't like a good thing. It was a, like, I became this redheaded stepchild, like the black sheep of the family in almost in a threatening way because what I was doing on social media was working, right? And instead of like elevating me in with the team and teaching social media strategies and these things that were working, it was like, we're not even gonna talk to her about it. Like, we're not even gonna address it. Like you go do over there, you know, just kind of this, like I became a threat, right? Um, now I I'm tend to, you know, not, I mean, I guess I just tend to be a straight shooter and, and kind of like, fine, if that's what you guys want to do. F you guys, it's my business. Like, I'm just going to keep doing my thing over here and I'm going to leave you in the dust, right? I'm going to let my results speak the words, right? I don't need to kind of whatever. And so I did that and I was aware enough to know that they were threatened by me, that whatever they were going to come at me was because they wanted to, you know, put fear detour me off of whatever I was doing because they don't know those strategies. And to them, it's scary to like have someone new come in and teach not the norm, right? And actually get results. And so then it was to them discredits their authority in that space. Like, well, if she's getting results doing this, why are you guys teaching that? Right? So now fast forward to where I am now and and seeing a lot of this come up inside of our community and talking with different students, different network marketers, entrepreneurs across the board, right? It makes me sad that so many, it's disheartening uh, and it's an ugly look for this industry that so many um, network marketers are, are feeling this way, right? You're supposed to be like a team and we're going to cheer you on and support you and all these things. And then all of a sudden you want to build a different way. You still want to build that business. You still have the goal, which actually builds your uplines business. And now all of a sudden we're not going to support you. You're going to go over here. You know, we're going to cut you out of chats. We're going to, we're going to be the mean people. Right. But where's all this love and support that you show and you know, all this stuff. And I just want to remind you guys, you're doing this to ditch your nine to five or to fire your boss or whatever, not to go into a business for yourself to then have a boss. So your upline doesn't own you. They don't get to tell you what to do, how to do it. They're there to support and guide you and mentor you through your journey of building a business, but not like, did you do your 10 messages today? But did it like not to report your daily tasks i mean there is you know what do we call it accountability i get that but a lot of these entrepreneurs and network marketers are are feeling stuck or they're feeling pulled internally in two different directions because they want to build in a different way that aligns with them but then there's fear there's there's intimidating there's there's risk of being the outcast and, and how that feels to a person, right? So then that network marketer, that entrepreneur, they're stuck. They're literally like, what do I do? Like, do I keep building over here? Do I still keep doing this at the same time to make people happy, right? The people pleaser comes out, you know, in them and they just don't wanna ruffle feathers, right? So then it's like, what that's doing is that's hindering your growth in your business, right? Because you're, you feel aligned in one way, but then you're like, I just don't want anyone mad at me. Right. <laughs> and it sucks. Um, and what I would say is we hear a lot from successful people, leaders, gurus, uh, thought leaders, like, uh, that being an entrepreneur takes courage. Uh, it takes courage. And part of that courage is to stand up for yourself and your business and what you believe in and, and how you want to build it. And you can do it in a classy, tactful way, right? Where you don't ruffle those feathers. You can create healthy boundaries, um, but stand up for yourself, right? Stand up for yourself 
and your business and have that courage, the courage that you took to learn a new strategy and step into the unknown that no one else is doing in your company and your team, whatever that looks like, and ride that courage wave as you go, because you are the CEO of your company. Okay. Not your upline, not your sidelines, not corporate. Um, and so, yeah, you gotta, you gotta have that courage, uh, to stand for your conviction in the way that you want to build. I think one thing that comes up for me with this whole thing and, you know, uplines and learning how to build online differently or, you know, going against the green or whatever they've decided is how you do it, is it really boils down to communication with, you know, the people because we create this story in our mind, right? That, oh, she's doing this or they're doing that or they're ignoring me or, you know, whatever. We create this huge story in our minds that really might not be what ha what's happening. It could be what's happening, but it might not be what's happening. And communicating with your upline and saying, look, this is how I'm going to go build my business. This is what, you know, I I've seen other people do it. It obviously works, right? There's people all over, thousands and thousands of people that are building their business using social media. And some of them are doing it this way. Some of them are doing it that way. And there's really no right or wrong. I think that's the the issue with, with a lot mm -hmm. of this, right? Is your upline, when they are in this, in this space of like trying to like protect you or trying to like protect you from others, they're really doing it out of care and concern, right? They're like, this isn't how I built my business. So I can't necessarily, you know, attest this is how it's going to work. Because they built their business a certain way and maybe you want to do yours different. And again, there's no right or wrong. It all boils down to the communication. Because I remember with my upline, they did the same thing when I decided, you know what, I'm done building this old school BS. Like I'm totally done. It's either me quitting or I'm going to figure out a new way to build it. That was it. That was my two choices, right? And, you know, I was very great friends with my upline. They're incredible friends still today. And they were concerned and they brought their concerns to me, but in a way where, you know, I, it was out of care and concern for what I was doing. And they were concerned that it wasn't going to work. And, you know, I, me being me, because I'm a little bit like Adrian, I'm like, look, this is what I'm doing. Like I, you don't necessarily have a choice in how I'm going to do this. It's either quit or do it this way, right? Like that's it. I'm not going back to driving five hours every day and getting 20 numbers from strangers in malls and, you know, doing all that stuff or sending thousands of spammy messages to strangers on social media. I refuse. It doesn't, I did it and I gave it enough time to evaluate, you know, in my own brain and go, this isn't working. There's got to be something else out there. Right. So I think that's a key point too. But then there are those uplines that are a-holes and they will block you. They will dump you right out of their group. They will make you feel like you're the black sheep and that you, you know, you've been ostracized. You are like, removed from, you know, their lives. Like you're like totally blacklisted, like Adrian's saying. So every situation is different, but I think the number one thing is you got to step into this and be the one, like, yeah, it's not everybody else's job for you to be, you know, to make you successful. It's you, it's you stepping into it and being the one and managing your expectations and your emotions and the people, I mean, you can't manage people around you, obviously, but managing those relationships, you know, and just being clear and the boundaries, like Adrian's saying, like, you know, having the boundaries where you're like, listen, this is what I'm doing. It's either this or quitting. Like those are your two mm -hmm. options, right? Like, and I think pussyfooting around and trying to people please is, is a lot of what happens. We're like, well, we want them to like us. We don't want to be kicked off the playground kind of thing. Right. Like, or uh, excluded from whatever it is they're doing. But then your results speak louder than words in this. Go build process. your own playground. Go build your own. <laughs> and I think, I think that, you know, your upline, you communicating with your upline. Um, I was about to say something that's literally gone straight out of my head. But um, have you, yeah, it literally. This <laughs> but communicating with them, then you will know where you stand and, and you will you will see what whether they have an abundance mindset whether they will love you and be there to support you however they can okay but realize that you want to build it your way okay and then you may decide well you know okay fine that you know you it's having that conversation 
communication is I'm going to say it's like everything it's key to yeah. happiness. It's key to living a happy and being life. Being honest and open. Being an honest mm -hmm. and open and saying, look, this is not working for me. This is how I want to build. This is what I'm doing. Um, you know, I love and appreciate you for all the support and all the guidance that you've given me. And I know it's working for you. It's not working for me. And this is how I want to do it. Actually, and one of the one of the first questions we get asked by our students, should I make a new profile? Because I want yeah. to start fresh. Over. Uh, meaning yeah. that I don't want all of my people that are on my current profile to see, to see what I'm doing. Like, why do you need to hide, right? We, the the hide. answer is no. You never need to uh, make another profile because your old profile is already an asset. You just need to learn how to use it correctly, right? And if you feel like you're, you need to hide something from someone, whether from your upline or from people that you're working with or people that you know your old identity, <laughs> uh, you need to think, why do I feel that way, right? Where it's coming from and what do I need to do to overcome it? And like Fran said, communication, being open and honest with people is the only way to go. Do not hide, do not make new profiles. And what I see also where um, there's a lot of fear and uncertainty comes from because what we teach when our students start learning from uh, our strategies, they almost like complete opposite of the other strategies, right? And in order to attract people who want to build this new way, you have to talk about it. Like, because that's how you decided to start building a different way because the old way didn't feel right. You hate it. I secretly hated that process. I did it, but I hated it. And what I realized, because I hate it so much, I didn't want to recruit new people and teach them that way. Like, I, I know I have to ask people to join the business, but I don't want to. I caught myself thinking that way because then I'll have to teach them what really, like Adrian was saying, okay, let's make a list. Like, I hated that list. Why do I want to teach that list to other people, right? So that's where there is that disconnect mm -hmm. um and once if you want to attract people who want to build a new way you will have to start openly talking about the old ways and why they didn't work for you and how there is a different way so that's where a lot of new students uh they feel like they will upset their upline right because oh they're building the old school way they swear by it they might have built huge businesses old school way you just have to find a way how to communicate with how it felt for you how it didn't work for you and how you found a different way without downgrading someone else and disrespecting someone else right and for me it was the way okay i love my upline to death something you know in that nature they're incredible people i learned so much from them but i felt like doing it that way no longer served me although they build businesses and it's working for them and actually i would recommend not to fix what's not broken right if it's working for you keep building it that way because there's something incredible they're already built but just in case you know you feel like i felt right you know like you spammy weirdo you have hidden agenda you're constantly thinking how to prospect people and you turn it into a spam bot and you hate it just in case you feel that way you know there is a better way so see how i just gave you i just gave you like your your first life video there three minutes that's how i would say it brag about your upline that they're incredible people and they brought you into this industry and gave you something right you learned something and they might have given you something to realize that, oh, well, that's not going to work for me. So thank them for that in every of your videos. And when they're going to see, they will never see you as a threat. They will be like, oh, she's, you know, growing in a different way. And also pay attention also how they react to what you're posting. And if the only message they send you at the end of the month, hey, did you place your $200 order? because <laughs> it's end of the month or did you do the 10 reach outs and if you don't i'm not going to be able to uh you know support you 
or they actually going to message you and say, Hey, how can I help you to build your business this month? Like, how can we together, however, the way you want to build it, right? How can I support you? That was brandy for me. Like, it was like, oh my gosh, right? That it was upline of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so be become that upline of your dreams for your people even and like, just for yourself too like become the upline you know for yeah, yourself like you're talking that about being the one that you want to have for yourself right so it seems so easy right like when we're talking about it like it's like it just seems simple but if you need more help on how you can like learn all of this stuff and manage all these emotions and this you know, these new things that you're doing, grab the link that's going to be with this video because it's going to help you move faster because building a business online, offline, traditionally, you know, whatever, when you've come from an employee or a different place, there's a lot of things that you're not aware of and a lot of things you're going to have to go through. And we've made you a roadmap that makes it that much easier. So you can grab that and uh, go for it in your business. So we'll see you next time. Bye everyone.